Okay, the question I get asked a lot is, you know, why, why, Gary, are you doing EFT? Why do you put so much energy behind it? Why did you even bring it out in the first place? And, you know, that just sort of evolved over time. Um, I probably wouldn't have done it at all if I hadn't had my spiritual experience back in 1988, because that was a big shift for me uh, mentally, emotionally. You know, before that time, I was the typical American. You know, I was... Uh, I was mean, going to do a business and I was going to raise a family and I was going to be somebody and, and all these other things that, uh, that our ego tends to have us want to do, to be, be somebody, to be better than and all of that stuff. And then in 1988, I, I had this spiritual experience. I just fell into this thing when I was in the arms of the creator and the, the whole world that I thought was so, so real just vanished in, in place of a world that we're just not aware of typically. Um, but the world that I was seeing, the world we see now, is just kind of vanished and, and here comes, I, mean, it was, I was in the arms of God and it was just this big gasp. And after that, it left an impression on me, an indelible impression that just would not go away. It shifted everything. Um, in what you might say were subtle, but yet very powerful ways. I still seem to be the same guy that I was beforehand, but it, I was much softer. Um, and, and as I eventually came across what became EFT, um, if I'd been using my previous self, I would have said to myself, oh, gee, what a great tool how can I, how much money can I squeeze out of this thing, you know? How can I profit from it to the best and, and make the most money out of it and be famous and all of this, you know? So, um, but I didn't do that. I didn't do it because of this other experience. This other experience is like, it's like when you've had it and you know no one else is, or very few people have had it, it's so hard to explain something like everything is one, yet our senses tell us, no, everything is separated out, you know. And everything is love. How do you explain that when we live in a world where there's angers and resentments and wars and all kinds of problems and poverty and everything else? Okay, How do you explain that to somebody? But it was like, I mean, I, I would try. You know, I would tell people about it and they would they'd be polite and nice and all that, but they really didn't get it. And it's sort of like I had, I had run into a, an endless pot of gold at the end of a rainbow someplace. And I knew where the pot of gold was. And, and I want to go out and tell people, come on, here's this pot of gold. Come see the gold. You can take as much as you want. And there's always more there, you know. So everybody come. It's for everybody. It's, you know, it's the kind of thing you share, you share, you share, you know. Um, but the other part of the share wasn't really there. They, people weren't warming up to it regardless of how much I talked about it. Um, but this pot of gold, you know, it wasn't just the monetary value of some gold coins in a pot. Um, it was really a pot of joy, a pot of peace, a pot of, a pot of uh, awareness and love that is just so far beyond our experience here. And while I was in that experience, you know, one of the things that it was very clear to me was there was an immense healing power. I mean, in that experience, everything that we think about here sort of vanishes. And there is no, there's no such thing as, as anger, grief, guilt, diseases, death, any of that. There's just nothing but laughter and joy and peace and, and love. That's all there is there. So hard to put our head around, okay? But yet such a big challenge to bring to the public, okay? And I was really motivated to do that. And when I came across uh, a few years later, what eventually became EFT, um, I kept asking people. I said, well, okay, but I had, I had this spiritual experience. We've got this thing where you can tap on the meridians in the body and, and, and it does a whole lot of things for the therapeutic process. Uh, reduces it down to you know, minutes and hours instead of weeks, months, and years sometimes. Remarkable. You do things with it you can't do with man-made techniques, including a lot of medical things and stuff like that. But people really weren't listening. So I just brought out EFT without the spiritual component. But I was driven. 
I was always driven. There's something bigger here. But EFT took off. Um, the world started using it. People started to recognize there are things beyond all the man-made techniques that are out there. There could really be a marvelous healing technique. So it started to open minds and open minds, and millions started to use it. Great, wonderful, wonderful. In the back of my mind always was, ah, but, you know, this is great. This is wonderful. Tapping is, you know, people love it, and they're getting good results. Wonderful, but there's a bigger point still. We're missing the big one, okay? We're seeing a little pot of gold, not the big pot of gold, okay? So... Time went on, and eventually, as I would keep asking people questions about my, tell them about my spiritual experience, and now people would start to warm up. Oh, really? Well, tell me some more about that. And as I had discussions with people, I would find that, that there was sort of a, in a way, a movement away from formal religions into more of a spiritual practice that people were sort of doing on their own, um, that doesn't mean, you know, formal religion is out of the way, but it, there, was a, there was this shift going on. There was a spiritual awareness people had, even though they hadn't had my experience. They were reading books about people who have had that experience. Um, they were starting to listen to quantum physics, which has scientifically proven that this whole world we see is an illusion. They're not calling it a pot of gold, but they're pointing to the pot of gold out there. There's, there's nothing there but a oneness in reality, so people are starting to open their eyes a little bit. The awareness is starting to come about. And so, ah, now is the time to interject another level into EFT. So, so I knew it was going to be the spiritual thing. We had to bring this pot of gold to the rest of the world. It was just, it was just so important to do because you know, the world as we would would see it was just, well, it certainly had its pleasures, you know, which kept us attracted to the world. Uh, it had its difficulties as well, okay? <laughs> Lots of them. And and I could see where this part of gold or this part of joy and love and awareness that is the real reality, far more real than what we think is real in this separated world. If we could even get a piece of that, if we could start climbing a stairway to miracles, if you will, where we could start on, on, on a beginning step and then gradually get to the point where this awareness of this real reality starts to come home. Ah, oh, now that's a great motivator. Oh, what a motivator. And, and so, you know, I set EFT up originally because I wanted, I didn't want to set it up to see how much money I could make. I wanted to, the goal was how many people can I affect with it? That's a much different goal, okay? How many people can I affect with it? And now the goal starts to be how many people can I introduce this pot of joy to? Um, so that people start to climb their stairway to miracles and start going, yes, I see it. Yes, I'm in this body. Yes, we have this world to deal with. Now I start to see this. Ah, I see something. Now we climb some more steps up the, Stairway to Miracles, and I see it more, and I see it more, and I see it more. And as the higher we go, the more we're willing to let go of all of the ego stuff that surrounds us that we seem to be immersed within, okay? And we start to see this pot of joy. So we do that. We do that, and we find that there's a lot more freedom involved as we climb the Stairway to Miracles towards the pot of joy. So I began... Uh, adjusting EFT to uh, what is now called optimal EFT. We begin bringing in this spiritual presence, which I wanted to uh, uh, make sure it was non-denominational so I didn't step on the toes of any specific religion and so on. So we're really talking about the spiritual dimension. We're talking about ultimate source, but we give it the name the unseen therapist. Non-denominational name. Uh, you could you could replace the name unseen therapist with any name you wish God Jesus Allah Buddha higher power source it doesn't matter what name you give it what name you're comfortable with it is still the essence of that is this ultimate healing love which I you know belongs in any kind of a um, healing process. 